The Los Angeles Rams, a team that I felt personally fell very far under the radar outside of maybe Puka Nakua as they are a couple of points away from beating one of the best teams in the league last year in the Detroit Lions to head on to the divisional round. And at that point, you just never know what could happen. The Rams were kind of seen as a team that, ah, the Detroit Lions are easily going to beat them. But that didn't necessarily happen. And this team, while feeling depleted of players, has just enough players. They have just enough talent. Obviously, Stafford played at a pretty damn well level, obviously. Uh, Nakua had one of the greatest rookie seasons ever, let alone wide receiver seasons. Just one of the greatest rookie seasons ever. Uh, Cooper Cup, obviously, there's some injury concerns and just a little bit of a fall-off in general from, like, I don't know if he started at 99 overall this year, but 89 overall is definitely a drop-off. Obviously, there might be some regressions in here, so he might be a little bit higher than... No, no regressions. Just an 89 overall. I guess that's what he is now. But the one thing I will say about this team is that uh, not really a rookie this year, but a lot of youthful players putting in their work for this team. Obviously, Kyron Williams was a much-needed uh, kind of surprise step up, if you will, uh, and then a lot, and I mean a lot, of good players in this rookie class for them on defense. But looking at the offensive line, they obviously spent a ton of money on guards this season, where in Madden, it's probably going to be a bad thing. But in real life, especially Kevin Dotson, not bad at all, of course. Very, very expensive contracts. Like, I mean, what are we talking? 15, 20 mil per year for each of them. Uh, Dotson, definitely really good. Jonah Jackson, not a bad guard either. Um, but in Madden, <laughs> these moves kind of suck for us. I'm going to be honest. Thankfully, I think they're both three-year deals, which I did give them both the contract. We're down to like 10 million right now. Tight end, though. They have, uh, I mean, I'm really trying to think of the last time they've had a, a like dynamic tight end. Like, I guess Jared Cook. But, like, at that point, he still wasn't, you know, the best. But, yeah, I'm going to definitely be looking at tight end early. Uh, Parkinson, I'm not really sure why these tight ends are getting paid so much. You know, he was a decent blocker, but realistically, I'm not, I don't really see it. Like, six and a half million per year, pretty much, for Parkinson. Like, I mean, at like, what point, I guess, I guess I can just see why Hawkinson got paid, like, 20 mil per year. That's all I'm saying. He's not a bad player, obviously. Hawkinson's great, but... You know, if Parkinson's getting paid like six, then yeah, guys like Hawkinson deserve to be paid 20. Evan Ingram, 15 plus. Like, it's just, it's a little surprising. Gotta be honest. Of course, Jimmy Garoppolo's here now. Uh, Avila, I'm not really sure what we're gonna do, but you know, somebody's gonna have to play center, right? We they get rid of Allen. Not that it matters too much, but can't waste Avila, right? We gotta put him somewhere. The biggest thing, though, of this last offseason was obviously Aaron Donald retiring, which, you know, Kobe Turner, Aaron Donald didn't leave them in the worst of hands as Kobe Turner could have made an argument for him to be defensive rookie of the year. Some pretty good defensive rookies in the NFL, but uh, he could have definitely won it. Byron Young was pretty good. Ernest Jones had a glow up season. Safeties, we need new ones. Cornerbacks, uh, Darius Williams has actually been pretty good over the last couple of years in his career. But uh, Trey White, you know, kind of like Stephon Gilmore vibes. Like, you're still probably going to get a good player, but you're not going to. Well, you're likely not to get, you know, the player that they once were, but in a Madden situation, oh, he'll be the guy. He will be our guy for pretty much the rest of this rebuild, I'd imagine. So I love to see that. But, you know, we're talking about real life. There's a lot of needs for this team. Obviously, interior, edge, off ball, safety. You could still probably use a corner. Uh, O-line, you know, wide receiver wouldn't hurt. It was, you know, you could put Cup mainly in the slot, but... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm gonna really going to go for that position tight end, like I said. But realistically, I think based on the strengths of this draft and where those players are projected to go, I'd like to see the Rams probably go edge. I think that's probably going to be our choice, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a, an interesting rebuild because Stafford, he's good. In a real life, he's definitely solid. We'll see how many more years he has left in him, you know. It really helps when you start off with a freaking cannon of an arm. You know, obviously that's one of the things that definitely goes with uh, age is the arm strength. But starting off with a cannon definitely helps. Um, and I, I don't know about Madden rebuild-wise, though. I, I really don't. Could absolutely just retire next season. And it would just throw us, a you know, for a loop. But... Yeah, this is one of the harder teams. It's uh, a team that I, once again, could consider as a Madden 24 rebuild team, like using them for a franchise, but we'll see about that. Uh, but regardless, let's get on into it and see what kind of draft we can get. Before we move on, though, let me know in the comments section below what team you'd like to see next. I know we can still do a Texan Stephon Diggs rebuild, and obviously once the draft is like 
you know, beginning and ending, we'll have a ton of different rebuilds there because it's pretty much impossible for every single team to pick the players that everyone talked about. You know, you could see J.J. McCarthy, and I mean, for all we know, as a Patriot. But, um, yeah, let me know in the comment section below what team you'd like to see next. Texans are on the mind, but there's some other teams that, you know, haven't really been talked about. So let me know. And while you're down there, maybe leave a like if you enjoy the video when, when you know, later on, you know, when we're a little bit further in. And maybe subscribe if you're new. We do a ton of franchise stuff and rebuilds in general. And I appreciate your continued support if you are not new. Let's uh, let's get into this rebuild, though. Get back on the Super Bowl win column because it's been a little bit of a drop. You know, it's 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 becoming warmer outside and the Super Bowls are, you know, it's they're starting to, starting to dry up a little bit. All right, so pick 19, like I said, I'm pretty dead set on an edge rusher, and, uh, you know, I would probably prefer Chop Robinson as a scheme fit, but Latu, Robinson, verse even, but he's, he'll probably be like a top 15, uh, would all be great. So uh, we're hoping one of those are there. If we, if we have to trade up, I think we might. All right, I also made the Patriots left tackle a 99 overall X-Factor, so I'm really hoping they take QB. Thank you. So that's all it takes to get them to take QB. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to, like, Fix the Cardinals left out every time, too. Chargers could be all over the place. Trade down, wide receiver, O-line, you know, there's a bunch of different things. So we're going to let them play it out. The Giants, same kind of situation. Probably wide receiver, but could easily see a lineman. Uh, the Titans, lineman probably. They go Bowers. Jane Daniels throwing things uh, for a loop. Bowers is always, almost always going to the Jets. The Falcons usually go edge, and uh, it's going to be verse. Nine, Marvin Harrison Jr. for the Bears. I've been seeing like mock drafts where somehow they land him without a trade up. That is hilariously laughable. Um, but uh, yeah, there's that. Byron Murphy to the Vikings. What a pick. If he was there at 19, which I doubt that's going to happen, I would go for him as well. Uh, there, there's some pretty good players here. Fashanu. Uh, Latu. Oh, no, no, no. What are my options? I do also have the DT Newton. I'd prefer Edge, but I'm going to go until one of. Oh, I suppose it was Seattle, so what could I do? All right, we trade. Uh, oh, no, I didn't want to put that four, 144 on. I didn't mean to put 144 on. So the problem is I... Uh, so for some of these, uh, or for all of these, I have the trades on very easy because obviously I need to move players around for each rebuild and whatnot, and I have that saved like that. And instead of uh, you know turning back on normal, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to use the trade finder, the trade value thingy online and it was very even so i was like okay i'll just let it happen then i'll change it over and of course i forgot to do this i was like oh maybe wait so i can't have okay we'll just give them uh i guess we'll just do a pick swap both these teams probably projected to do pretty similarly anyways too broke can't afford it but here we are at 17 i mean obviously you have neighbors and odunze and i know there's a lot of people that be like well take them joe alt's there take them i'm, I'm sorry it's just not the way it is. And I know it's probably more fun to just play it how it lies. But these are supposed to be realistic stuff. This is fantasy style. I mean, there's nothing stopping me from taking whoever the hell I want. But, uh, yeah, realistic style, I don't think I can do that. I just don't. I'd like, Joe Alt never making a 17. Neighbors never making a 17. Odunze, maybe. But even he's probably like a top 15. So, I can't do these two for sure. And I don't think wide receiver is that big of a need anyways. Fotanu, that's a good pick at 17. But I think... I want to go with more difficult position to develop, and that is going to be Newton, the DT. I really wanted Edge, though. I really wanted Edge. I might still go with, like, Neeland, even though he's probably not the best scheme fit. Just fit him in somewhere. Uh, any Edge. I'm pretty sure all we have left is, like, Braswell, which we did that. Didn't really work out. I'll be honest with you. Didn't really work out. So I think with that said, we're going to go with uh, good old Johnny Newton, Jerzon Newton. That's going to be our choice. We have, uh, I don't know if I would say successfully replaced Aaron Donald, but we've definitely made it a little bit easier. Uh, now we move on to the second round. I can't trade up that high. Can't move up anywhere past, like, a few slots, and even then it's not worth it. Xavier Worthy. That could be a worthy selection. Troy Franklin, wide receiver's on my list. I kind of want to go Rice. I've seen him all the time, and I've never went with him. Tight end's a big need for us. I'd say Theo Johnson would be great. Patrick Paul, I believe, is uh, star dev. So do we go tackle? I mean, this that could be interesting. Tackle would be nice. Edge is really a problem, but scheme fit wise, I'm not really seeing it to be honest. And then corners, you do have Rake Straw still there, which is very interesting. Not gonna lie, safety's a big need as well. 
I really don't want to pass on tight end, but this team is really not invested in tight end anyways in real life, so it kind of would make sense to just let it go. I'm going to go Patrick Paul, the big left tackle. Missing Andrew Whitworth, we're going to get ourselves a hidden dev, six foot seven left tackle. You know what? I'm not going to trade up again. I'm just going to move on to our next pick, and whoever's there, 19, I think that's who I'm going to take. So we got some wide receiver options. Might go with Rice, pick three in the fourth round. I don't know if he goes in the third. It says three to four, but I've seen him go to the fourth. Sanat, that's not a bad tight end choice. I don't know what his dev is either. I don't think we've really taken him many times. Um, some options, definitely some options. Not the worst group of players remaining. Could go with Phillips, the corner. I just don't know if rebuild-wise we really need that position right now. Do have some safety edge. Bullard, I think, is normal dev. But the value is there. Do I go tight end or do I go with the safety Hmm. They just paid tight end. Higby's on the roster. He's not great, but he's he's on the roster. I'm going to go the tight end. Oh, and he's hidden. He is hidden in this class. Okay. Win. That's a dub. That is a dub. We move on to three now. Could be wide receiver. If Bullard's somehow still there, that's going to be my choice. No other picks past the fourth round. This team is very uh, wild with their draft picks anyways. Bullard is unfortunately gone. Uh, corners, there are options here. Is Phillips there? No. Abrams Drain and Smith Wade are there, though. Uh, did we get Edge? I think we passed on Edge, didn't we? Still options like McGregor. McGregor's an option. Rice is still there, too. Add, a, add yourself a 6'3 a wide receiver. Problem is, I don't know if I have the, like, room to start him right now. Like, do I just put Cup in the slot primarily? I feel like that's just a waste like, in real life, you can move these guys around at will, but in Rebuild, you can't. Uh, McGregor could be a decent option at edge. 6'6", 267, a little hefty, but very athletic. We're going to trade the Ravens. I mean, we're going to gain a 7th round pick. It's not too many spots back, I don't believe, so... We move off this spot to move back 8 spots, gain a 7th, so... It's something. We're going to trade back again with the Vikings, get a 7th uh, next year, a 6th the following year. We're just adding value. I wish I could add those for this year, but I could always make a trade-up using that. Uh, and at 29, whoever's there at edge, I think that's going to be what we take. And McGregor's still there, so that's going to be our choice. Braden McGregor going to be our new outside linebacker, I think. I don't think we really have any competing players at that position, to be honest. Uh, that's why I really want to chop Robinson or Latu in the first round. But at 17, not only a little steep, but also... Can't really trade with our division rivals when we have similar needs, apparently. And there are still some pretty decent players, but I'm just going to move on to the seventh round. I'm not going to really do any more trade-ups. It's hard to keep track of who's valued at what and what's fair and whatnot. Definitely would have loved to get an actual safety in this class, but, you know, that seems to have gone, come and gone. So I'm going to look for some sort of corner that's fair value here, one of these, hopefully, and uh, call it a draft. And Dwight McLaughlin is the only guy that uh, is actually fair to be here, really. 90 speed, 90 XL is going to be our choice in the seventh round. Definitely a little disappointed that we didn't get one of those edge rushers in the first because uh, now we're still really looking for uh, options at that position. But we did get Newton, so we still, you know, sort of address, uh, address the front four. So what can you really ask for? 74, 73, 73, 70, 67. Not terrible by any means. Got ourselves, you know, three hiddens. Not bad for a, a user class, uh, which, of course, this is Bengals. Uh, sometimes you guys ask. It's pretty much going to be his until, well, the draft is is done. And, you know, it's on to actually creating the players and putting them on each team. But for their actual ratings, uh, Newton, very good finesse. Decent power move. We've drafted him a few times now. He's never really fully developed, though. I feel like every time he's been star dev. Am I crazy? Uh, looking at Patrick Paul. Uh, pretty good pass blocker, it appears. You know, decently athletic. Solid left tackle. And then we have Ben Sanat, or Sinat, uh, is, you know, decent. Not you know, quite that uh, that super vertical player that we were kind of talking about that this team hasn't really had. But he's definitely the best potential starting tight end that we have, without a doubt. So he's the number one without eight out. Uh, and then, yeah, not the deepest draft in the world, but what can you do? We got three for sure starters, technically a fourth with McGregor. How long? I don't know. Maybe just this season. We'll see. All right, here is the squad for season one. Uh, improved left tackle, uh, especially with the uh, upside um, improvement. Tight ends obviously improved, and then that's kind of what we did on offense. That's really it. You know, Demarcus Robinson and Tyler Johnson with like one-year contracts. 
that the Rams signed uh, so far this offseason. Uh, looking at, you know, the rest of it, you know, probably need to replace left guard. I know that he just signed in real life for a good amount of money, and he'll probably be good. And you know, same with right guard. Uh, at least Kevin Dotson we could live with a little bit longer. But uh, Havenstein, don't know really. You know, he's a bit on the older side, 32 years old. Great, but a little bit on the older side without a doubt. Uh, running back, I'm hoping develops. And then quarterback, maybe shortly after. Definitely going to be looking at that position every year. And then linebacker, I'm not sure if they're just going to be drafting linebacker, but the the CPU or the, the user class, it's not the best for linebackers. So unless I was going to draft like a 67 overall and develop them, I just went with, you know, pick your poison at uh, free agency. We've got Anthony Barr at middle linebacker too. It's, it's not the greatest situation going, let me tell you. Edge, not the greatest situation going either. I would have loved to get Chop Robinson or Latu, but... We did get Newton, and uh, you know I moved uh, Turner at right end, Newton at left end, and Bobby, who is the biggest of the bunch at nose tackle. Uh, cornerbacks didn't really change much here. You know, it's basically what we started with, and then obviously the safety Cameron Curl is the new addition, the biggest new addition really in the off season. Well, I guess Trey White, but you know how much will he play? Will he stay healthy in general? How good will he be? I don't know. Hey, Newton got uh, the first of two. So not only does he get the plus three to power move and finesse that you automatically get, but he gets the 10k XP, which is another upgrade. I don't know how much of a spoiler this is, but uh, we're midway through the season and we don't have a win yet. I don't know how much of a spoiler. I don't want to spoil things. Gotta love it. Uh, we have two names for sure we want to re-sign. Rob Havenstein, that age uh, cost a lot of things going against him for us to re-sign him. So we'll see, but definitely the first two. We absolutely want to pay. Six year 54 for Ernest Jones. We're, you know, hoping he's the number one. And then Trey White, I think a three year deal worth 57. In real life, I don't know what kind of contracts he, you know, he's gonna get. But uh in Madden, I know I can easily do that and not feel bad about it. Uh Havenstein, don't know how well he's playing. Let's see how he is, you know, if he's doing well. Four sacks allowed eight. Uh, I mean, that's not terrible. If I can do a one year instead. Real solid for, I mean, maybe 17.5. One year 18 max. That's what I'm doing. We did not have a good season. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you that. Uh, there's a good chance that we had the very worst season. Uh, it doesn't hurt, though, if there's a quarterback available. We have, one would assume, the first pick overall. If not, pick two. Top two pick. That is very high. Uh, looking at the scheme, I didn't change anything. I rocked whatever they rocked, which was this. Rams offense and defense. I mean, that is absolutely. I don't care how good people think McVay is. Two and fourteen or two and fifteen season, barring some crazy injury. I don't know how you don't fire someone. This team is not the best in talent, but it is not two and fifteen bad talent. Especially with your quarterback, right? Especially have your quarterback there. The Niners and where was the other game? The Patriots beat the Patriots and the Niners, and every other game was an L. What a disaster. Looking at the uh, stats and awards, though, Matthew Stafford, garbage. I mean, garbage. That That is a replacement season. Kyron Williams, not great, but it's Madden, so that's basically like God status. Cup was pretty good. Nakua was terrible. Sanat was terrible. Scheme does matter, and we're pulling off of this Ram scheme ASAP, 100%. Uh, Young, though, with eight sacks. Uh, Kobe Turner with seven. McGregor with six. Four for Newton. I've seen way worse with from better players, so I don't hate that. McLaughlin with three picks could maybe even win Defense Rookie of the Year, but just get some sort of dev up. Joey Sly missing two out of 14 kicks is not bad. Mac Hack, 52.3 yards for punts. Pretty damn good. Kick return, punt return game. Was that Trey White on the kick return? It was not. I don't know why I thought it was Trey White. It was not. 32nd offense. Joe Burrow wins MVP. Any award wins for this team? Uh, Rams at number eight. And Rams at number five and six and seven. Best quarterback, obviously not on the list. Best running back, obviously not on the list. Wide receiver, number five for Cup. O-line, not on the list. D-line, not on the list. Linebacker at eight, or at two, surprisingly, for Byron Young with eight sacks. Best DB at number five with McLaughlin. So hopefully he gets a dev up. Uh, Joey Sly at six, and that is it. The worst possible record in, well, not possible, but the worst record in the league. Pick one overall. Probably going to be grabbing quarterback. Especially since Matthew Zavra could legit just straight up retire. Eagles versus the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. A super fun new matchup we've never seen before. And the winner of that game is... The Chiefs. Okay, I mean, super fun matchup. 
DevOps. Definitely no one on offense. But maybe some defensive ones. Hopefully the cornerback, at least. And it is. That is the only guy that went up in dev, though. Unfortunately. It is McLaughlin. But uh, you know what? Maybe we have ourselves a future starting corner. I'm not sure. But yeah, not the best season we've seen. I don't even feel like our guys even went up in overall that much. And I, I boosted the stats to 150, 160%. I mean, sure, I guess. That's the way it is, I suppose. Left end, right end doesn't really go up in overall that much. But if you move him to DT, jump like three overalls half the time. But yeah, positions, edge, probably. Uh, middle linebacker, potentially. Safety, for sure. Maybe corner. Uh, quarterback, for sure. O-line, maybe wide receiver. Don't even know if any of those are regression numbers or not. But regardless of the point. Oh, yeah, retirements would have happened. New quarterback, I think, is going to be what we choose, assuming there's someone there. If not, it'll be edge at number one, I'd imagine. So I'm just hoping one of these times, like, where's our generational? We haven't really seen that many, like, can't miss number one beasts. But at the same time, where is ours? You know, Havenstein uh, does not want to join anymore. Ironically enough, his ask is literally what I offered when he said no. Maybe we just, well, I mean, not literally, but very close to what we offered. A one-year 20 or 19. There we go. One-year 19. We like to see it. Back on the squad, Bobby Brown will be re uh, replaced, so we'll need a DT as well. But we're not in a bad spot. I'm uh, going to just get new special teamers, even though Hack wasn't that bad and either was Sly. Nah, we'll keep them. Screw it. We're trying to keep it realistic. We're going to keep players that played well. That's just the way it goes. So uh, two years seven, I think, is fair. And then 18 million left. We will go for Matt Hack, a two-year five. Boom, boom. That's what happens in my pants when I eat a burrito. Death free agency. We have Simmons. We have, ooh, Waddle. This team doesn't really need wide receiver, but if Cup can be, like, traded, I'm just saying. Waddle probably doesn't ever hit free agency, though. Be traded if before that happens. Uh, Taron Johnson, not bad, actually. What's his, like, man and zone? He did a dev up or two, and with his base ratings being good, could be here a lot longer. Safety edge. But I don't know about being a uh, a corner. Man cover is not great, but in general, I don't know. I'd rather have someone a little bit more developable, if you will. Jay Judy's not a bad wide receiver. I mean, we're kind of broke, so I don't really think there's any reason for us to actually invest in free agency, especially since we just had... Oh, Quiddy Pay, maybe. Quiddy Pay, actually. Especially since we just had... The season we just did, and our quarterback needs to be replaced, and Quiddy Pay is not worth it. More of an overall and a name than an actual, like, tout. And I hate that it's getting dry in here. Dry season is the worst. I get so, like, my mouth gets dry, and, like, I just start, like, almost, like, gagging. I don't know. I hate it. I hate it. But I suppose before we do any scouting, I should confirm that we have the first pick, please. Nice. Look at these picks. And we have all those extra draft picks as well. Even though the Jacksonville one is just like a pick swap that should have never even happened. But pick one. There we go. We got anyone we want. Pick one overall. And I don't know. We'll have to take a look at, you know, how the f scouting further went. But quarterback. Uh, one to two for Melton. It is a one to two. Which is still, uh, you know, a high draft pick, I suppose. Pretty athletic. Very good throw power. Some very good accuracies. But then I also have this other guy that I really resonate with for some reason. Uh, something about his name, I think. Uh, a block shed. A tackle. Decently athletic. With an A power move, B finesse. I need to take a look real quick at Mr. Matthew Stafford. This team needs edge bad. If Stafford isn't like 38... He's 37. That's kind of why I said that. I mean, Stafford's still good enough. He's 79 overall with, you know, 85 deep, 85 medium, 85 short, 91 throw power. This team could go QB. Absolutely. But the if Smallwood didn't exist, I think maybe I do. But Smallwood exists, and I think he's a really good player. I'm going with an A block shed. A power move. B finesse. B man coverage. Beast. Antoine Smallwood, and he's hidden. 85 speed, 89 XL, 6 foot 6 edge rusher. And of course, all the way at 25, Jamie Melton, the guy that I was debating on going with in the first round, finally goes. I was looking, I was like, a lot of these teams don't really need QB, and of course, the Cowboys don't need QB either. 
went QB. Uh, some other quarterbacks, Justin Shaw, who was a 2-3, to three, which, hey, guess what round we're in, is an option. Elite throw power. I kind of like him. I kind of like him, but I don't know about it because I do have a bunch of other options here, like a really solid-looking corner, uh, multiple solid-looking corners. I think I got a safe, safety, maybe an, uh, a D lineman interior. Uh, some options there. Two to three. We have a three to four. Now nah, we have three to four. Never mind. Corner safety is definitely up there, but do you not go? Oh, you also have wide receiver Acosta. Michael Acosta. Not the fastest, but a bunch of A's and B's. I like that. I do like that. It's a pretty solid looking player. And obviously, Cup is not going to be here forever. Do you go QB? Second round. I think he sits a year, anyways. Once if you have another bad year. Or, once if you never have a bad year, I'm going with it. Justin Shaw looks good. I'm taking him. Hidden Dev. That's a win. That is a win. A round one talent in the second round. That's a dub. What can I say? I'm trying to debate on what I want to do next because I really could use a safety. And there's some safeties. All right. Pick one in the third round. We have a bunch of different corners here that we could draft to play Safety. The problem is I also need a linebacker and a... I can't believe a cost is still here. Oh, the value. Uh, I also need a linebacker. I need a linebacker, I need a safety, and I need a defensive tackle. I think we can pull all of that off, potentially. Wide receiver is nice, but I don't think I make that play. If I can move back like 10 spots again, like a fifth, that would be great, because I need to trade up. Then again, I kind of want to just go with what I think is going to be a guarantee, and I think Galvin's a guarantee. Looks like a safety build as well at 5'11", 191. I'm taking a guarantee, I think. Yeah, um, I think you can live with not filling every position if, in doing so, you land yourself a guarantee. The Saints land themselves another freaking Marcus Colston. O-line is definitely, you know, it's on the list, but as of right now, I don't think we actually need anyone. Uh, all these corners are still here. Oh, we don't even need corner, actually. We just drafted one to play safety, obviously. Uh, we could use a corner in general, though. But, um, DT, obviously, on the list. Oh, we got a bunch of DTs. Okay, so we're chilling. We're chilling for now. Let's just relax. Let's keep going and, uh, you know, hope everyone keeps falling. The further they fall, the easier it is for us to trade up. Oh, that was one of my linebackers, wasn't it? I don't think I have any other line. I think one linebacker, Fant. Which, I mean, at this point, I just need a linebacker, so I'm going to have to trade up for Fant. He's kind of raw, but I don't have much of a choice. If you couldn't tell that the trades are on normal de <laughs> difficulty, there you go. A bunch of stuff to move up, like 17 spots. Uh, we can live with DT. DT's still, like, you know, available. So, uh, you know, we're going to just hope that that stays the same. Fant, probably going to be a bad pick, but, you know, 21 years old, athletic. What can I do? Lance Fant. And he's hidden. Never mind. We might actually be goaded now. We might actually be chilling. Might trade and draft pick next year for a DT, which we're seeing them go. Broyles just went. He was obviously another really good player. DT still chilling. We still have options. I'm liking it. Werner was one of my edge. I think Adams was one of my guys. I think I have the last guy that I kind of thought I was going to get, too. In, uh, I Do I want to say the name? Villal Villobos Villobos Villalobos. I don't know. He looks kind of raw, but I need a starter. And I mean, he looks like a, a player of some sort. I don't know what else I can really say, but that is going to be a trade up option for us, I think. I think that's who we're going to try to trade up for. I think it's a pretty good trade for them. They get a very high fifth this year and a third next year, which could also be very high, even though we are changing our um, our scheme around. To get this third round draft pick, which is going to be a DT that we kind of desperately need. Sharp probably is better, but I've got to take the position need. Chris Villa Lobos, who is normal dev with 84 strength. Love it. And our next pick is all the way in the seventh round. So that's where we're going to be moving. I doubt we'll have anyone there, but we'll just grab somebody. I don't freaking know. Fullback, maybe running back. We have a couple of other cornerbacks. I think uh, that one guy that just went even, Arthur, was on my list. 6'3", 21 years old. Kind of slow, but not really a positional need at this point. I don't really think there's going to be any running backs, though. I don't even remember scouting running back. I grabbed one of the other corners that I had Bingham on my list anyways. Let's see what Smallwood uh, is overall is. 76 overall. Quarterback's only a 72. Galvin is a 76. Middle linebacker is a 71. And then Villa Lobo is easily the worst pick of the bunch. With good finesse, in fairness, is uh, 71 overall normal 
Uh, Smallwood, 76 overall. What is that dev is the big question. Great power move. Solid block jet. He looks really good. Like, he looks borderline generational. Like, he is very close to generational. Like, that is... I mean, that's a good player. That's all I can say. He looks worth the first pick. And he is superstar. So, I mean, we landed a pretty damn good player. And overall, considering we were going to go Max Melton as our uh, our first pick overall, and we still got a hidden dev quarterback, I think it worked out. I mean, I'll, we'll take a look at what Melton looks like. But Shaw looks great. I mean, I think he's he's easily able to be the franchise. Let's see what that dev do anyways. And, and he's a superstar. Okay. I like it. I, we actually did pretty well for ourselves. Nice. So two to three, while the overall was pretty reflectant of two to three, the, it doesn't really affect the dev, it seems. So, I mean, we're chilling. Star dev, new free safety, who dis? Um, I guess number 20, why not? And then the final guy we need to look at, especially since he is the final hidden, is Mr. Fan. Pretty athletic. Um, coverage, yeah, it's pretty weak. Can't lie. 69 zone coverage, which is... Supposedly his best rating at his NA is not the best I've ever seen. Star Dev was kind of hoping for Superstar, but uh, we'll put him at number 45 because he's fast. And then we'll take a look at Max Melton. Did we dodge a bullet? Because, I mean, unless he's an X-Factor, we we kind of had to have, right? Because we landed a Superstar in the next round. Wow, Novak. That's why I didn't got him further. He just looked like a bot, so I was not about it. Oh, did we pass on the wrong guy? We got a Superstar anyways, but uh, worse block shot by a lot. Technically worse finesse because it's like minus one to our guy's power move. Same speed, I think, actually, in the exact same Excel. Dev? Start up. So we obviously did not make the wrong call there. Uh, let's take a look at the quarterback from the Cowboys. Please be normal. Oh, could you imagine I took him at pick one, dude? Oh, my. Thank you, Jesus, for Matthew Stafford not retiring. Because if he retired... I probably take Melton because I have no choice. Uh, at, at best, I trade down and take Melton, and even then, it's still we would have grabbed a normal dev. But because we had the luxury of still having a quarterback for one more season, I was like, you know what? I'll take Shaw in the second round. Why not? The value's there. Both second round quarterbacks hidden dev. That is crazy. The Eagles, another NFC East team, not needing quarterback, taking one. Although I will argue, nice superstar dev as well. Uh, I will argue that. Uh, you know, the Cowboys, you know, Dak's a little bit older, obviously, but still, we cooked. And the Bears did what the Bears do, which is apparently land a hidden dev. That guy looks so bad. Even if he's an X-Factor, that's a terrible pick, and he's only star. And as much as I would like to start our rookie, uh, a guy like Levante David sitting in free agency is not going to allow me to. And Taron Johnson's great and all that, but yeah, the I can live with passing on Taron Johnson... And even Michael Pierce, who is a really good scheme fit for us, because in real life, I mean, how durable is he? But uh, Levante David, nah, I can't, I can't be passed on Levante. All right, here's the squad for season two. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do with Stafford. We're gonna let him play it out. Well, we're gonna play these two out in free agent or in preseason, and whoever plays better is gonna start. But after that, I don't really know. But uh, looking at the offensive line, we have three. Debatably long-term guys, if you want to call Dotson long-term, but definitely at least need a new left guard and right tackle. Could need a new center, could need a new right guard, we'll see. Tight end, hopefully, is tight end one. Wide receiver two is going to be wide receiver one at some point. Cooper Cup's going to need to be replaced. Running back, Kyron Williams, it wasn't a bad season. 3.8 yards per carry for a guy that's not the fastest, not the biggest, and, uh, of course, not the highest in overall is okay. Linebackers, we have our future middle linebacker, hopefully in fans. Levante David at the number two spot as this is Ernest Jones' team. Uh, but really good linebacking group with him added on. Edge, at least left out, looks great. Byron Young, he had a decent season, so I'm hoping he'll uh, be the guy as well. Camera Curl, don't know about long-term, but Galvin definitely should be long-term. D-line, we'll see what happens with uh, Villa Lobos, but other than that, looks all right. Cornerbacks, might need a new cornerback too, so I will say while we have some things uh, figured out, this is probably one of our least prepared, I wouldn't say prepared, but least future prepared teams we've had in a realistic rebuild going into season two in a while which is fun i actually enjoy it more all right re-signings uh kyron williams i mean he's our best option at running back thankfully higby's gonna be gone because he has been a huge expense to this team haven't signed if he's still around i mean we're kind of building something here a little bit he's a pretty damn good tackle so 
We'll see. Might be an end of the season type of deal because we don't even know if he's going to be here. Kyron Williams, I mean, can you do better? Maybe. Will we be able to do better? Probably not. So we're going to resign him. We have 59 mil left and... I mean, things are finally in a decent spot. And this is why we don't worry too much about normal dev DTs, but this one was more of a really low overall and normal dev problem. But because of that normal uh, and slow overall, low, not slow, overall, 20k XP. I think the torch has been passed. Uh, we did not make the playoffs, or at least I very unlikely assume we will. But the thing is, uh, we were at 4 and 8, 4 and 9, something like that. And I was like, okay, well, the season's over, so I might as well let the rookie quarterback start. And I do not believe he lost a single game as a starter. I do not believe this. But we'll take a look. Uh, he definitely won at least four games. And that's, you know, whether it was every single game or it was four and one is amazing. But this is how it started. And then I think was it this week? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I started in week 15. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, week 15. So he didn't lose a single game. The thing is, though, Stafford wasn't bad. It's just, you know... Shaw didn't lose a single game, even though he threw a pick and might have sucked. I don't know, but Shaw did not lose a single game. We ended up going 8-9. I think the torch has passed. I'm just going to be fully for real, but let's take a look at the numbers. Stafford, like I said, not bad. Oh my god, Shaw's him. We should have started him, but this is a realistic scenario. We drafted a pick one quarterback in the second round. That is not a guaranteed starter. Stafford played really well at the start of the season. We just lost games. You could argue whose fault it is. Kyron Williams was amazing. Cooper Cup and Nakua, a little bit better for Nakua. Number three, we probably do need a new wide receiver just to even have it number three, let alone to replace Cup soon. Sanat was not great. We need to maybe go with a new playbook that gives you the tight end getting juice, but uh, somebody was good here. It was the guards, I think. The two guards they paid a lot of money for. Patrick Paul wasn't bad. Byron at 10. Smallwood, once again, relate. Nine for Newton, nine for Villa Lobos, seven for Smallwood, which is not bad, but this is the Rams' defensive scheme. I mean, this might be the juice. Punter wasn't as good. Kicker was pretty good again. But this might be the scheme, no? Is this not, like, the one we should be rolling with? Any award wins? Did we still maybe win off as a rookie of the year? Where was he? Oh, my God. Shaw was at four, and he played four games. 10-1 picker ratio is amazing, though, right? But, uh, damn, we didn't look at the cost either, but apparently he's decent. We got Villa Lobos at this uh, defensive rookie of the year. He had a really good season. Could be an X factor. Like, if he got a dev up because of how many sacks he had, but he got the dev up for Superstar based on, you know, the award wins. Maybe you never know. You never know. Running back was uh, our fella on the list. Am I crazy or should he have been on this list? At, four, what, 1,300 yards, seven touchdowns? Touchdowns are low, but okay. I mean, I guess wide receiver number four and not anywhere else. So that we maybe had two. Uh, D-line number seven for Newton. Linebacker number three for Byron. DB, not on the list. Kicker number two. Not a bad year, even though he missed the playoffs. Not a bad year. And Shaw could be him. He looked really good in the limited time he got to play. The Commanders versus the Patriots in the Super Bowl, though. What is going on here? What is actually happening here? And it is the Commanders who win. Okay. Speaking of, I also think... I don't know what happened, but I think when I traded Cameron Curl or I brought Cameron Curl to this team, he was re-signed. By the commanders, so we actually probably should have had to pay him here. It is what it is. It might even be, you know, more costly than real life. So whatever it is, I mean, we'll just adjust it maybe. Because I can't really adjust it now. Because then I'll have one week to re-sign him. Uh, unless he was on the list and I didn't see him. I don't see him. Uh, Havenstein, 83 overall. He's still really good. The 17 million deal. Okay, I guess if you agree. 25 mil, so we're going to be new, needing a new right tackle, which it was going to happen sooner or later anyway, so I guess maybe just get that bandage off while we're still starting a young quarterback, perhaps. No fifth year option kind of sucks on that QB, but three more seasons of rookie deal is fair enough. Free agency. Oh, we should have actually seen if Stafford retired. The fact that we have 50 mil tells me he's still probably here, and he is. We can get rid of him, and he had a really good season, so even though he's 38, a little bit of Rodgers in there, maybe like a guaranteed late Second round pick would be fair. And my mic wasn't on, but we ended up trading Matthew Stafford to the Jets for a third and a fourth round pick. Both high draft picks, but they get another potential 
Hall of Fame quarterback, but this time a little bit cheaper. All right, look at this squad uh, going forward. Uh, Nakua at 91 overall. Cooper Cup, so good enough to be the number two this upcoming season as an 88 overall. Need a new right tackle, potentially need a new center, probably need a left guard, probably need a new right guard. Quarterback's great. Obviously, everything else is great. Defensively, DevOps for Villa Lobos and... Cameron Curl, who is an 86 overall now, 27 years old, not the best player in the world, but what are the contract actually like? Because we might actually have to, like, reset him right now, which is, yeah, they gave him, like, a five-year deal. So we're going to do a one-year deal worth, I don't know how much he'd be worth at this point, 11? And then we'll, uh, you know, if we decide to re-sign him, we'll re-sign him. I think that's fair. 11 million is a lot. For 86 overall, it's a lot, but we shouldn't even have him right now, so... Realistically, this hurts us because at 27, I probably sign him to a two or a three year deal. But now, you know, he'll be 28. Do I really sign him to a two or three year? I don't know. But uh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, the squad's getting there. It's getting there. The quarterback might be, oh, wow, for speed rusher plus three to block shed. Okay. But uh, yeah, that uh, quarterback might be the saving grace, if you will. But you know, we still need quite a bit. Hopefully, that third and fourth round pick will at least help us get another lineman or two. Also, free agency is filled with tight ends. Obviously, uh, Joe Tooney would be great. Deron Bland, bro. He never... Ooh, Trent Brown. New right tackle. Who this? He's tw he's 33. I don't really think signing him for more than one year while he's red interest is the best bet in the world. So if we can keep him or get him as a right tackle on $20 million on the year, I'm down. Although you also have Ronnie Stanley, but they actually... You know, he actually has some, uh, some competing bids. Cornerback's obviously on the list of needs. Linebacker, maybe. But really, it's just O-line at the moment. And I don't really like the value of anyone else. Don't need tight end, unfortunately, because Mark Andrews would be such a steal. I don't know why they would let him go. Uh, Tooney's decent, too. But I think Ronnie uh, or uh, Trent Brown is going to be my guy. And I'm debating Deron Bland because he's 27, but he is good. Don't know what Trey White's like future looks like. And we do need a cornerback, too. Maybe I do offer. Maybe I do offer Deron Bland a 3-year 45, 15 mil per. What is the offer? We might be able to get him. Did we get him? Wow, he still chose them, but at least we got Trent Brown, the 89 overall, now right tackle. Little surprise we didn't get Bland. We offered him more than they did, but oh well. All right, we are at pick 15 in this year's draft. I imagine Edge is going to be pretty high on our list. I put like four first-round worthy guys. I don't know them by name, but that is definitely one of them. Parker, he looked pretty good. Maybe the best. Jensen was 100% one of them as well. Don't think Johnson was. Hunter was. How many players do I even have left? Ooh, also wide receiver Wilkinson's still there. He's a top five guy. I didn't scout him further because I thought he'd be gone, but very intrigued. Got some uh, some things there. Uh, but I also do have Haskins. He's a little bit later. Looks like a, a promising player as well. I think Haskins is our guy. Um, but looking at Edge, do we even have anyone other than one? I think we might just have Henry. We literally have Henry. We have to trade up to Cleveland if we want uh, Henry. Which I think we do because Byron Young's 28 years old and he's like an 82 overall. He's, he's really not ever going to sniff elite status. I really wish it didn't have to be this way, but we had to give up 67 to move up five spots from 10 to 15 for the edge rusher. I can't remember if Hunter was better than Henry. I think Henry might have been better than Hunter, but uh, let's see what we got. I really want Wilkinson as well, though, and Tyler Kemp looks great, but I think Haskins later will be fine. We are going to, I believe, go with Delvin Henry, the 22-year-old, 6'5", 260-pounder with some speed and a finesse and an A to B block shed. Please, there you go. We basically just another, you know, we dropped another small wood. Put those together, they have normal wood. This is a lot to give up. We gave up a second round next year, a fourth round this year, a fifth round two years from now, a fifth next year, and a sixth this year, and Byron Young, I don't know if I mentioned that, for the first pick in the second round, which makes sense because, you know, our second round pick next year could be Super Bowl level. But I made this straight up because I wanted this cornerback, and I think corner is definitely a future need of ours. So, you know, that second round pick easily could be gone for this uh, position. So uh, this is the corner we're going to be going for. He looks really good, in my opinion. A man, B zone, Quincy Samuel. He's 20 years as old as well, and uh, he's going to be our guy. And he is hidden. He looks really good. 20 years old. He could be here for 15 seasons. And, of course, I need Haskins, so I'm probably going to go to, like, 10, trade up. And then our next, very next pick we have is literally, hopefully Haskins is even there. I can't even see right now. Love it. 
you know, fourth round pick is our next pick after this potential trade up. We move up four spots. We traded a six next year, a six the year after, and it needed like a sliver. So I just traded some random 58 overall quarterback. And uh, the, the play has been made. 15 in the fourth round is our next and pretty much only pick. This is going to be Mr. Haskins. Looks really good. I like him. 6'2", 21 years old. Looks like a dude. Welcome to the squad, Hidden. Nice. He looked like one of those dudes. And we've actually cooked pretty well in this draft. I know it costs us a lot for the future, but it was worth it, I think. Now, in the fourth round, I have a tough decision because uh, we've kind of neglected the backup running back position. And this is one of those, uh, like, slow but super strong, like, ball carrier, like, break tackle guys. I'd be willing to assume that's a 99 break tackle running back. Don't know if those guys are traditionally hidden, though. And then speaking of, you have another one of those really fast guys. I don't know if he's superstar dev, but he does look pretty good. So do you take Jenkins to have a decent backup who might be hidden? I don't freaking know. Or do you trade down and still get that wide receiver, potentially? I think I'm going to trade down. We're going to be getting a sixth and a seventh in the next following years. I don't really care where this pick is. I just need to fill out the rest of the drafts a little bit. Yeah, it's a pretty good pick all the way to the sixth pick in the fifth round. And the wide receiver is still there. Why not add some speed? Normal dev, but 99 speed, 98 excel. That would be a very good draft pick. Probably a guy that doesn't get past the second round in a user league just because of the speed alone. Uh, so that's the guy we're going to be driving. And I don't know what the overalls are, but I think we drafted some gems. I think the wide receiver definitely was a gem. Let's take a look at these overalls. Hopefully that pass rush is good because we obviously trade off Byron Young after a very good season. He's just 28 years old with a low ceiling and we need to pay him. 76, 78, 77. We cooked. Henry, 76 overall with 80 finesse, a different type of guy too. I think both of our guys were power before. Now we have a finesse type. Hoping for a superstar. I would love to see what Hunter's dev was. Dev, star, damn son. Uh, let's put him at number 99. Why not? Uh, well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe let's do like something in the 50s as well. Let's do like, I don't know, 55. 55 is kind of cool. Holy crap. We do not have a lot of numbers available. 50. 55 was available. No, it wasn't. 54, 58. Let's do 50. Why not? 50 and the edge. Quarterback Samuels, 20 years old. Looking like a goon. Look at the man coverage. He is very young as well, which is obviously... Pretty cool for trying to develop and stay as a high overall for a long time. Star Dev, unfortunately, as well. Wearing number 30, I guess, because all the other numbers are kind of garbage. And then the wide receiver, Mr. Haskins, Tremaine Haskins. 77, you know, 77 overall with very good catching, decent uh, short, very good medium, decent deep, and release. Probably another Star Dev, unfortunately, but I think we landed some pretty good players. What over uh, number zero? It's not terrible. We put something else on, though, like number two, whatever, number two. Let's take a look at Hunter and probably call it a draft, right? I don't think there's anything else we need to look at. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess the wide receiver, Wilkinson, went all the way to 13. 79 overall. Six through, oh, is he generational? Because 87 release looks pretty busted. There's no way a generational wide receiver went this late. There's no way. I think that's generational, personally. Wearing number 80 is crazy as well. Look at all these linebackers. Let's take a look at Hunter. 76 overall. Hidden development traits. 6'3", 21 years old. Much slower than our guy, but I don't really care about speed when it comes to edge. I just want a good edge rusher. Pretty much can't get him outside of the first round. Also star, so we, we definitely did do well for ourselves. Okay, I mean, that generational uh, wide receiver would have been great, but we still landed a good one, and we got ourselves a new pass rusher that's young. Season three, I'm not sure what I want to do at the scheme situation. I think maybe the Cincinnati Bengals, that the Falcons or the Chiefs are just a little bit OP. Maybe the Falcons, not so bad, because at least the wide receivers aren't goaded, goaded. But uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll go Falcons. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think, because I know some of you guys are just like, if it, dude, full send, Chiefs, Cowboys, one of the two out the gate, uh, which I think is definitely a little OP. But I don't know. Maybe I do a poll at some point or something, because... Uh, at this rate, I'm just so conflicted every time we do a rebuild because it's like, I know the playbooks like the Chiefs, the Cowboys, potentially the Falcons, they're very strong and they'll give you some pretty good numbers, but then every rebuild kind of feels the same if I do that. I like to maybe mix in the Packers or the Bengals or the Vikings where you can still win with the scheme. It's not going to be the best, but some players do well and I don't know. It's just like, I need to run the Falcons or the Chiefs if I ever want a tight end to develop, but at the same time, you know, Sinatsi's still a 79 overall and he's young, so... 
I mean, other than, like, forcing to be a god by playing one of those schemes, I think it's all right where he's at. And then defensively, D-line, Kobe Turner, not a huge fan of where he is, but you kind of knew that was going to happen because he's, like, 24, 25 out the gate. But he's not bad by any means, obviously. Newton, we already talked about it. He's, like, never higher than star dev. It's just, I don't know what it is, but he just doesn't develop higher than star dev. He's really good. Just, he's kind of maxed at star, it feels, but... We definitely have potential, you know, looking at the, the cornerbacks. Samuel's going to be number two because he's definitely built better to be the number two. And then Darius's like, final season is right now, and he's 5'9". I think it works out better that way. Safeties are what they are. Linebackers are what they are. Look at the defense. Maybe you have to replace Trey White is your biggest name to replace, perhaps. Maybe Curl. But that's not a bad thing. You know, it's a pretty good group of players on defense. And then Ola offense still could use a guard, still could use a, another guard, maybe a center, maybe a tackle. Wide receiver, I think we have fixed. Running back, we'll see. But uh, Kyron Williams was great last year. We're still missing a few things, but we're definitely in position to probably make the playoffs this season, assuming the playbooks are good enough. Holy money, Puka Nakua. Might as well give him the seven-year deal now as he's obviously wide receiver one. Uh, it's even low for him. Cameron Curl, this overall might as well do a three-year 37, so it's like $13 million per. Uh, Kobe Turner, I mean, we could definitely do worse. We could definitely do worse. So three-year 46, 150 mil left after spending all of our money already. Uh, we'll do a two-year deal for Avila because 79 overall is a little iffy. Did he even accept? He did. Dotson, I've, once again, I think we could do better, but at the same time, the price is right, so why not? 134 mil, Cooper Cup would be an after-the-season kind of thing. Uh, Jonah Jackson, now that's a little different. 78 overall is a little low for 29, so I probably will have to move on. And then Trent Brown, if he does stick around one more year, I think it's worth it. 21 mil. Okay, at 21 mil, 22 mil, I'll do it. But any higher, probably going to let him go. Fifth-year options, anything? Newton, we'll see about that. Got a lot of money. We are chilling. Money is not a problem. Just, I don't know what Cooper Cup's overall is going to be, so I don't want to jump the gun. If we win, we could actually be in. It was a little bit of a rocky season up and down, and we do lose, which means 8 and 9 again. Rolled with that Cincinnati Bengals uh, playbook on offense, and still suck it out with the Rams defense. Like I said, really up and down. I mean, for a moment, I was like, oh, this could be our year, but I don't think we ever reached more than, like, one win over our loss by, like, midseason. Uh, I did not want to go back to schedule. I want to see the stats and awards. Uh, might end up moving like the Falcons and then, you know, year five. I think year five is like the Chiefs. Unless the team's built to win now, it is a Chiefs year five. That's usually what we do. Shaw, not bad. Rushing, Kyron Williams, not bad at all. Nakua, really good. Cup, okay. Haskins, okay. Sinat, decent, but no touchdowns for a tight end is ridiculous. Uh, blocking six sacks allowed for a center is... Really crazy. Four sacks allowed for Trent Brown is amazing, so we I'm glad to resign him. Newton with 11, Smallwood with 9, Turner with 8.5, Villa Lobos with 4, and then Henry with a measly 2.5. Uh, that's what I'm rocking. White with 4 interceptions, Curl with 3, Sly missing 4 out of 9, Team Kicks, Hack with 50 yards per punt, which is just what I need. I need at least 50 from you, otherwise I don't like it. Offensive fast, though. Stats are just killing us. Uh, Lamar Jackson wins MVP. Any awards for us? Haskins still wins Rookie of the Year. And Henry, who is terrible. Okay, that basically confirms that it doesn't take a whole lot to win M uh, Rookie of the Year for a user. I mean, I don't know how many tackles he had, but like two and a half sacks, I think it was, and you win Rookie of the Year. I mean, I'm not complaining in any way, but that's pretty ridiculous. Let's be so for real. That is ridiculous. Uh, give it to our corner or something. I mean, he played all season. I don't know what he did, but, I mean, I don't know. The Panthers versus the Chiefs. Did the Chiefs win the last Super Bowl? I can't remember. No, it was the Commanders versus, what, was the Patriots? Jim Daniels turning that team around crazy. And it is the Panthers that win. Hey, some new teams. We like to see it. Commanders winning the Super Bowl. The freaking Panthers winning the Super Bowl. DevOps. Haskins is a superstar. Nakua. It's an X-Factor, and Cooper Cup straight up retires. Uh, oh, no, Kyron Williams goes up in dev as well. I just seen that as he went into Nakua, who is a superstar X-Factor. Not bad. 27? 27. I think the age already hit, too, so we're cooking. De uh, speed? 87. <laughs> Can you go up in dev, please? Uh, of course, not bad. Wide receivers are actually in a good spot. Smallwood was not already an X-Factor, was he? Was he already an X-Factor? I don't think he was. Smallwood, decent season. A little surprised to get X-Factor, though. And I don't think... 
He gets X Factor while Newton stays star. I'm telling you, the dude is actually cooked. He is actually cursed to never get to Superstar Dev, while Henry, with a really bad season, does. <laughs> so, I don't know how to tell you there, but you know what? We got a few Dev ups, some pretty clutch ones too. The wide receivers, the pass rushers. We'll take it. I mean, this is kind of like the season to turn it fully around here. Uh, as, you know, year four will be a good season, and year five should be a great one. We have a ton of money as well, so we can sign whoever we want to in free agency, as I still think, even though we missed the playoffs, again, we are absolutely in the realm of, like, we could win it all any season. Newton, I think at 20 million, you might as well just pay him the full regular contract, because that's probably what it's going to be, or less per year anyways. Uh, and then kicker, punter, I mean, we could definitely do worse than Joey Sly, so if he now okay, doesn't want to take it, then the puncher, we could definitely do better. We could definitely do better. Uh, what else do we have? So I think I've seen Darius in 82. I mean, McLaughlin's probably good enough. Johnson, he's been a pretty good uh, backup safety, but he's like a after free agent bidding, uh, tampering, if you will, uh, is over type of guy that'll still be there. So if we want him back, we'll probably get him with no real hesitation. So we're going to move on from those guys. We're going to look at free agency, 133 mil to really just, you know, kind of upgrade O-line potentially. Upgrade safety, kind of, not really. It's really just O-line that we need. Maybe depth at running back wouldn't be the worst. Tight end is 81 overall. I mean, wide receiver don't really need one. It's just a team that needs to keep developing, really. Uh, middle linebacker, perhaps. So middle linebacker, maybe corner, because White's getting older, but I think he's fine. And then O-line. But, I mean, we should see O-line in free agency. Anything else, highly unlikely. But let's take a look, and then I'm not sure what we draft, because at 8-9, and nine, we're going to have another decent draft pick. But really, like I said, we don't need many positions. Tunsil is not really a guard. Betonio is 35, but he is the only true guard. So, you know, it's been a little while since we have uh, have had Joel Betonio, and I want to make sure we get him. So a $22.1 million deal, what does that compare? Oh, if we don't get him this time, that is some bull crap. Kendall Fuller, he's not... Ooh, nah, we don't need pass rusher, damn it. Uh, he's a good corner, but we, not really the biggest need. Safety, you'd get good value out of him being a backup, but... Really, uh, you know, Ty J Spears maybe as a backup wouldn't be bad. Love to see the market here for running backs is, you know, pretty realistic. We basically get whoever we want. Uh, could use a right guard, but we did pay Dotson, so I'm just going to let it fly, let it roll. And, yeah, that's kind of it. Those two players, I'd say, are the only players we need, and we get both of them, to no one's surprise. I genuinely think I am going senile. It's going to save some time, I suppose, for the rebuild. It's not going to be as long of a rebuild. Which, I mean, I, I welcome, I suppose. But, uh, of course, if you weren't aware, we ended up getting Joe Batonio. And who was the other person? Oh, yeah, and Ty J Spears. But we ended up with some other good players. Uh, one of them being a wide receiver, Greg Wilson. You're like, oh, who's this six-foot-tall guy? Looks pretty decent. You know, when did he get this guy? What round would that have been? It was uh, round 17 in the third round. Pretty pretty good stuff. You know, what's, what's that dev looking like? That's the wrong player. Way to go, idiot. What's that dev looking like, you know? Get yourself a decent player, probably like Star Dev or something like that. You know, nothing nothing too, too crazy. But, uh, yeah, you would learn that he was an X-Factor. <laughs> he was an X-Factor. Uh, unfortunately, we also, uh, we made a bunch of trade downs, which this is what our draft picks look like remaining. We end up getting rid of a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, some other picks in the future. Uh, but a bunch of trade downs from 15, and we made some trade ups, and we also sat where we were as well. Uh, but we ended up with a very high overall corner. Unfortunately, normal development trade, 80 man, 77 zone. That was our first draft pick. I think I traded up to 10 in the second round to get him. Uh, and then another really good player we got was Braxton Baker, a uh, linebacker. This was actually not in order because we took a lineman before him. But uh, Braxton Baker in development trade, superstar dev. So we actually cooked pretty well, but... Then we had this guy who was actually a pretty high draft pick. I think he was a second rounder, normal dev. Not a bad player, but obviously normal dev for an offensive lineman automatically makes you a bad player. And yeah, pick 11 in the second round. We traded up for him right after the wide receiver. I genuinely think I'm senile. I was talking into the mic without ever hitting record. <laughs> I had my mic kind of like out because I was going to, you know, I was going to, what is it called? I was going to just... Do my scouting, then turn my every oh superstar for him. I didn't know that. Now that is something I did not know. Um, but I was gonna turn on my mic after I did the scouting, and uh, I just completely forgot to. I I lost my mind. 
But long story, I forgot where I am short. This is what the squad looks like. We have ourselves a really good left guard, really good right tackle. Rest of the line are, you know, let's not talk about it. Tight end one looks decent. Wide receivers, one of the best wide receiver groups in the league, assuming, you know, we keep everyone intact, which I think we can because Haskins and Wilson are really early in their rookie deals, obviously. And then Nakua just got his contract. Uh, quarterback, 81 overall, was really um, average, I guess, but... He's really good. Superstar development trade. Just didn't play that well. Uh, defensively, not really much we need. Maybe Kobe Turner is like the biggest positional need to change. Maybe Trey White perhaps, but the defense is in a good spot. Just needs to keep developing. But yeah, Kobe Turner, based on block shed and power move, is probably the next guy to get replaced, which is kind of crazy to think because, I mean, he's an 86 overall. I mean, that's kind of wild that he's the next on the list. We're off to a pretty bad start, even though I'm running the Falcons playbook. I might just switch to the Chiefs and just do the damn thing. Uh, Newton, I mean, I'm hoping for a dev up, but even without one, at 31 years old, I would definitely be fine with him at star. Trey Way probably gets another contract, but I don't want to, like, jump to gun to the gun yet. Uh, I'm going to go to 29 years old for Senat, uh, or Senate. Uh, Patrick Paul, we need to keep some sort of lineman, so uh, a five-year 55. Contracts are pretty smooth right now. Am I crazy to think this? I feel like these contracts are very favorable. Um, I don't even know if we need McLeathern, but at that price, nah, okay, see you later. Uh, anyone else? McGregor, I'll take the backup at that price. 7.2 mil, okay, dude. Four year, uh, you know, four mil per year is not bad. We'll see what happens with Batonia, but he'll likely retire. Look at all these names, oh my god. Um, but at least Smallwood looks like he is interested in re-signing, and then Dicker, because of his, you know, overall and all that, Probably will end up just uh, re-signing him here to a 3 or 15. Okay, apparently he wants more too. Everyone is so entitled. Oh, what's all this about? We got a safety with Superstar Dev? I'll take it. Am I genuinely losing my mind? Like, I'm not I'm not trying to, like, play it up for the video or, any, video or anything, but I am actually getting very pissed. 5 and 12! I ended up going with the Chiefs scheme for the last, like, five weeks or so. It did nothing. Hello? We're 42-7 to 7 worse than the Bengals? Are you genuinely kidding me? No, 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 no. I gotta go back. Like, these are the games are 42-7 to 7 to the Bengals. Hello? Excuse me. Whoa. What? I'm gonna look at these overalls. I mean, you gotta remember, we missed the playoffs at five and twelve, and we are tied for the like basically the Bears are ninety overall, but basically the highest overall team in the league, the third highest so far, fourth, fifth highest, sixth, tied for sixth right now, and we missed the playoffs at five and twelve. Imagine we don't miss the playoffs. We get the XP for making the playoffs and winning games in the playoffs and all the stats that usually come with actually winning games and making the playoffs. Genuinely, what is going on? Is this quarterback just ass? Like, I'm actually really pissed. I'm not, I'm not even joking. Like, it's just like, like, what is going on here? Like, hello? What do I need to... 15 sacks for a center! That's the worst offensive line season in NFL history by a significant amount. Then we look at defensively, Smallwood and Henry combined for 15 sacks, six for Turner, five and a half for Newton, three and a half for Villa Lobos. Uh, five interceptions on the season. Dicker was decent. Dixon, a lot of dick around here, which this game can eat one of those. Uh, MVP goes to Dak. Any award wins for us? No. I mean, I don't know why we would. We won the most award for the worst season from a good team in NFL history. The quite opposite of what the Rams do. They overachieve. We are severely underachieving. I don't know what's going to take to make the playoffs, let them win low and win a Super Bowl. I'm doing another season. I don't know what else to tell you. You know it's bad when I'm hitting you with the old classic PK, the PK or classic of I don't know what to tell you. Like, that. that is the, the hallmark of just a... Uh, what the actual F is going on? Like, genuinely. DevOps, I mean, who would have deserved one, to be honest? I I blanked out. I don't even know what the receiver numbers. Did we even look at running back or receiver numbers? 
Like, I genuinely don't remember what has just happened. I don't even know. I really don't. Um, did we get a dev up? I don't think so. I mean, I'm just lost, bro. I'm out of just a loss for words. And then we lose Trent Brown and Joel Batonio on top of it. 5-12 and 12 with this team, though? Like, excuse me? $26 million for the tag or the fifth-year option. Just not going to do that. I mean, I'm going all out. I am spending whatever money it takes to get the best team possible. I'm going ultra unrealistic mode if I need to here. I'm not really sure how I do that to help the team, but I don't know what the hell to do other than that. I, I just, uh, I've, I've given up. I've just given up. I really have. 112 mil. What do we need? Like D-line, I suppose. Uh, Dak, of course. It's a super, super weak offseason as well. Nate Wiggins. Did we even keep Trey White? I don't even remember what happened. I'm going to pay Nate Wiggins anyways. Even if we kept Trey White, guess who's coming on? Actually, you know what? I'm paying him a seven-year deal because it's going to save us money in the long run. I'm making sure I get him as well. Give me, give me. Seven-year 84. That's pennies for a talent like him. Can't wait for him to sign somewhere else. Which, I mean, in fairness, I would as well if I was him. Ramchek, welcome to the squad, buddy. We just lost, like, all of our linemen. Expecting you to do the same after the year's up, but I really don't care. O'Neal, welcome to the squad, pal. Tall, but, I mean, we'll put him at guard anyways because he's athletic. Is that it? Is that all we got? I think that's it. I think we're chilling after that. Boom, did we even get them all? We got Ramchek and Nate Wiggins. For some reason, O'Neal's... Uh, He's fighting us a little bit. Did we get him? We did. All right. I don't even know if I'm going to do a draft. I'm probably going to trade for some proven talent because I don't want to do that because I might want to do another season if we at least show some promise. But uh, what a disaster, bro. Pick five with this team. And yes, I'm going to keep whining. I don't care. Oh, and I'm going to take care of this real quick. Sorry, Steve. Ain't nobody sticking around if they're giving up that many sacks. You can go eat one of those. Dixon. 15 sacks allowed. The worst I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, we have a superstar anyways. And get that bot out of here regardless. Mc, uh, McPherson, center, welcome. We're going to play the whole nice guys bullcrap. We're going to look for you know positions we need and whatnot. We need a new running back, too. Not that Kyron is bad, but he's obviously up there in the age, and there's our cornerback group. I mean, it just feels like we haven't developed either with 150, 160 XP sliders. It's just the team isn't winning games, and because we're not winning games, our devs are slower. That's it. That's all there is to it. Oh, another stupid EA thing. Can't even trade for a player because they're negative in money. You know how you uh, go less in money? It's by getting rid of players that are expensive. Way to go, EA. You guys are flawless at making games. And I don't care that it's pick five overall. We end up trading a third round as well, giving them Kyron Williams for Brees Hall, the 27-year-old superstar. The best, quote-unquote, young player that we could have went for other than, like, Kenneth, which obviously in a division would have made no sense. Maybe Bijan, but Brees Hall is now ours. Realistic in real life? Hell no. In game? Yeah, probably. I mean, he's a very, uh, very good player. Just put up 5.8 yards per carry. You know, it's, he's a really good running back. So, at the end of the day, we got ourselves a super dynamic back, whereas Kyron Williams, even though he put up some decent yards per carry, is just not even comparable. He's like eight speed lower, and he's just nowhere near as good, obviously. Uh, but I guess we'll draft some, like, backup linemen for the future or something like that. I really don't know. All right. Could be the final draft for the final season. I don't know, 100% yet. Could this just be a straight-up fail rebuild where uh, EA just sends me for a bent-over simulator? Uh, what do we need? Maybe safety for the future. I mean, realistically, we need nothing right now. I do like that center. I got a couple of different linemen. I'm done taking tackles. They've let me down too many times now. Don't really need linebacker, but I scouted some because that's just the type of person I am. Could go with the cornerback White and play him at safety, but he is kind of undersized. We also do have the safety Tyler Watts. 22, could play, yeah, we'll play Tyler Watts, why not? Him development trait, nice win. Uh, he'll be the future strong safety, which we may never see. Then we move on to this pick, which I think I'm going to trade down to get multiple. LaShawn McCoy, who's back? Uh, multiple linemen rather than just like sell out for one. Boom, we love those trades. And I'm actually going to take the DT, Connor Sneed here. Hidden dev, win. Future play, Smith for uh, Kobe. 
And then we're going to wait for us to be down to one lineman. Callan was obviously one of my guys. I was about to take him there, so the Bills got lucky. Uh, but we have two linemen remaining, Martin and Hartwell. Walter Hartwell White and uh, whoever is remaining the last of the three I'm going to trade up for and call it a draft took all these picks to move up with the Chiefs I would have tried to use uh, players but uh, they're now negative 70 mil in the hole glad that you can't move players back and forth because clearly they don't need to get rid of players or anything like that Bernard Hartwell if he's not hidden it's going to be a huge sell for that trade up and he is hidden 91 strength what a win draft was still pretty good despite the fact that we ended up trading pick five overall for a running back 57 million to work with, 89 overall. Uh, we had three players, 73, 71, 75, and since none of them are starting this season, I do not care about the dev. We'll see them at the end of the season. And this isn't me, like, not caring, no effort. It's just me saying, screw it. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. Just, just play on, and whatever happens, happens. It's not really much you could do. All right, here we go. Potentially the final season, we'll see what happens. We'll see what kind of re-signings we need to do, if we can afford most players and uh, how well the season goes. If it's a complete failure, no chance. If we make the playoffs, win like one game or something, then I'll maybe, and, and we lose, maybe I'll do one more, just to, just to peak. But as far as that, uh, this could be the final season. Five, you know, year five, maybe we push out that six because, you know, I did have that whole like draft process where I just completely forgot to record. But uh, the offensive line looks, you know, just as good as it was last year. It's a new offensive line, you know, a bunch of old players again. And then offensively, we have Tyron Matthews as the backup. Wiggins as the new backup, the number two, uh, maybe replaces Trey White this upcoming season. So, I mean, we're future-proofed. We're stronger at each position. I mean, we even have better depth. You know, we have a brand-new kicker as a 90 overall. We have, uh, you know, Tyron Matthew, like I said, and then Wiggins, and, you know, we have... So much good players, you know, depth-wise. Calvin Ridley's an 82 overall, number four. I mean, Everett's a 79 overall superstar backup. I don't know what else we could really do at this point. I don't know what changed about this. Holy crap, that's not actually that crazy, is it? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. A seven-year 210, which is about 30 mil per year, which is on par for the average. The show only wants that little bit. What is this? I don't even think he's played that well, but that is crazy cheap. That is insanely cheap. I still don't know if we can keep Villa Lobos. Safety, the value is absolutely there, even though his overall hasn't really gone up much. 51 million. Fant is obviously gone. Trey White's obviously gone. Spears is obviously gone. Dotson, likely gone. Uh, Ryan Ramchak, all the old linemen, you know, they're kind of gone. Henry, if that's even close to what the fifth-year option looks like, is probably going to get that fifth-year uh, Villa Lobos. Haven't really seen too much from these guys, but he is a very good player. He's good at run stopping. What is his actual, like, he's not putting on much sacks. So the problem is he's not getting much burn. So honestly, 51 mil, even though we could afford him, I'm going to let him go. I don't know what it, uh, why this happens, but apparently you need a full season. Wow, okay, the rest of the division was terrible too. You need a full season with that scheme, apparently to be able to get yourself into the playoffs. We lost the first game. I was like, oh, here we go again. And then we lost the last game, but every other game we won. Let's take a look at the stats and awards. Uh, 33 touchdowns, uh, 8 interceptions. Shaw with 4,200 yards to go with it. Hall, 5.1 yards per carry with 20 touchdowns and 1,300 yards. Not really super impressed. Uh, you know, Kyron Williams could have done that, but with those touchdowns, could go to X-Factor, I suppose. So not hopefully superstar with the yards. Nakua, Wilson, and uh, Haskins, you know, it's a spread offense, and... They all got involved together. Uh, blocking center, new center, same problems. Right tackle was a lot better this year, though. Uh, pass rushing, Henry with 14 sacks, Turner with 13 and a half, Newton with 9 and 8 for Smallwood. Cocking. Interceptions, 3 for Curl, 2 for Jones, and a bunch for the other fellas. Dicker was awful, 3 block kicks. Even if you take away that, it's still 4 missed field goals on his own out of 16. 75% kicking, and that's not even factual. AJ Cole was decent and nothing for the special teamers. Look at the early awards. Definitely didn't win MVP, but maybe on the list. Yeah, number 10 right at the last second. Three for a haul at Offensive Player of the Year. Henry at number two. Rookie of the Year, no. Defense Rookie of the Year, no. Quarterback at number seven. Running back at number two. Wide receiver at number nine. O-line not on the list. D-line at number seven. Linebacker at number one and five. DB at number five. Kicker definitely not on the list. All right, the Giants at 9-8. and eight. I mean, we should win this game, dude. 92 to their 86. Come on. Like, don't suck. Going to the end of the game. Get the Chiefs offense. We actually have the Baltimore defense. 
Not a defense that I normally would ever run, but want to try something different. Looked pretty good so far. 14 to 10. Playoffs were, were not as strong as the uh, regular season stats are saying, but, you know, we're in a good spot to win this game, and that's exactly what we're going to do. 27 to 17. Oh, yeah, J.J. McCarthy is on the Giants. He played pretty well, to be fair. Uh, Shaw was definitely better. Brees Hall was really bad, though. Can't wait till we go against Kyron Williams and the Chiefs, and he's a god. Actually, no, we didn't go with the Chiefs. We went with the um, the Jets, actually. We're not going to have to see them anytime soon, let me tell you that much. Uh, sack totals were off the charts. This Ravens defense might be the move. The Panthers now. Winner of this game goes to the Super Bowl. Who the hell did the Panthers... Actually, they won a Super Bowl in this rebuild. What am I talking about? They have won a Super Bowl more recently than us, haven't they? But who did they beat anyway? I mean, you know, we're, we're already here. Might as well check. So the Panthers had to beat the Eagles, which is not an easy matchup. Then the Packers, which, you know, in the playoffs, it is what it is. The other side, it's the Patriots versus the Bills. Man, the rebuild here, though, has been kind of wild. A lot of brand new teams. I don't hate it. I don't really, you know, I don't hate it. Chiefs also in, like, cap hell, which we love to see. We're haters around here. I don't care. We don't mind seeing people win. But, you know, you're winning a little too much. All right, Kansas City, relax a little bit. Let someone else win, and then, you know, we'll we'll be back on your side a little bit. But, uh... 14-0 at halftime. It's not a strong score, and with that being said, we were only up by four at the time. But now, with just the right amount of defense, which is suffocating, apparently, we are going to win the game 29-10 and somehow go from four straight playoffless seasons to Super Bowl contenders. Brees Hall, eh, you know, not great. Cooper, wow, that is, that is some numbers, and those some numbers are not very good. Uh, Delvin Henry, two sacks. Interceptions, one for Horn. B would it be? Who is it against? Is it the Patriots? No way it's the Patriots. Is it a second Super Bowl they've been to? Once again, I'm going to have to see it. I'm going to have to ID them. I'm I'm happier than I was before. Was that Kenny Pickett? I think i seen Kenny. Okay, well, that's not what I wanted to do. Well, I guess at this point... Might as well, since we're already here. The Patriots beat the Steelers. Beat the Chiefs. Beat the Bills. Okay, we could be screwed. Looking at the dev ups. Uh, the quarterback, Shaw. No shocker there. Sinat. No shot. How is he not a superstar with over 1,000 yards? We've seen guys with 800 yards go to X Factor. Is it really just all touchdowns? Uh, 92 deep, 93 medium, 93 short, 95 throw power. He's very good. Throw under pressure is really bad, though, and play action, throw on the run. Player annoyed sense of pressure as well, but. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely good, but yeah, throw under pressure and whatnot. You definitely would, uh, you'd like to see those debbed up or uh, upgraded. Uh, Henry does go to X Factor, and I think that was the only other dev up, which is cool. Henry had a breakout chance earlier in the season, didn't get it, but with linebacker of the year, he gets it here. 90 overall. These are, you know, for a CPU duo, this is probably the best duo we've had this Madden. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, they haven't played like that outside of maybe this last season, but... 94 X Factor, 90 X Factor, and they're both like 25, 26 or less. That has got to be our best duo we've ever had, right? I mean, you can't really. <laughs> Turner's still star, dude. That is actually insane. But here it is 92 to their 88. Revenge match. Can they do it? Let's get it. Dak, really? Here we go. A few minutes in, and wow, they already have a score. We get a score back, though. 7 to 7. We get a stop and a score. They get a score. It's 14 all halftime. We had a chance, didn't score. Up by seven in the second half. 21 to 21. Nice touchdown. One stop could do it. And I think the Rams have done it. We have won the Super Bowl in the very final year where we had zero playoff berths up to this point. I was raging. I was mad. I was you know, having a hissy fit. You know, I needed to get my uh, my binky. Is that what they call it? I don't know. But we ended up winning, and uh, there's really not much more that can be taken from us. We have they, they took my energy away, I'll tell you that much. But we have actually won a Super Bowl from last year's point of, like, where do we go from here? But you can see the difference. Like I said, the XP, I don't know what it is. There must be some crazy boost in behind the scenes. Because when the moment we hit the playoffs, the moment we started winning games, our overall just skyrocketed. I don't know what it is. And it's not the morale. I'm, I'm discounting the morale. I'm just saying, like, Shaw went from, like, I think an 82 to an 89 this year. Despite all the other years he played, he went up to an 82 only. It's just, like, 
There must be some crazy boost that I don't know about, but uh, looking at the uh, player stats, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Dak Prescott was pretty good too, but through that pick, which was all the difference, it seems. Uh, I think that was pre-half pick as well. Brees Hall finally showed up. It's been pretty mid in the playoffs. Brees Hall killed in the Super Bowl though. Sinat with the uh, you know, pretty good yardage game. Sack totals, nothing crazy, but we did have some. And then Ernest Jones with a pick. Linebacker picks are just, there's something to be seen. Yeah, here it is. I mean, you guys seen it. We didn't have any force wins or anything like that. Any restarts. Just an un -effing believable run after just doing nothing. This whole rebuild, just doing nothing. It all came down to this is what we ran. Uh, this is the juice. This is the juice. Well, here it is. Let's take a look at the final roster for this rebuild as uh, we got lucky right at the end. You know, it comes down to the Chiefs playbook. That's why I don't like running the Chiefs out the gate because, I mean, it turned this, like, super losing squad into a Super Bowl champion that was, I mean, I wouldn't say dominant, but 15-2 and two with the Super Bowl win is kind of crazy. And Puka Nakua, the 98 overall. Not quite a 99 overall. The release is a little bit of an L, but uh, really good route running and great catching. Spec is a little low, too, but... He's, uh, he's a good player, obviously. Uh, looking at Haskins, the 89 overall. Super young, obviously. 23, though. I mean, I know he was young, but 23 young? He is kind of crazy. I'm going to be really shocked when I look at our cornerback two, technically cornerback three for this latest season, when he's like 22 years old because he started at 20. Uh, but Greg Wilson, great release, great deep route, pretty damn good catching, great speed. This means that short and medium route to get developed, and he is well on his way. The tight end. Let's take a look at old Ben. Uh, very good route running. Not the greatest in catching, though. Uh, a little bit better in speed than he started, I believe. Did he start at 84, 85? Maybe it was 86. I don't know. I don't really care. I, nah, I don't care too much about Kevin Dotson, I'm going to be honest. Patrick Paul, though. Where are my upgrades? My man has been starting for how long? And he's at an 83 overall. I don't know what it is, but I cannot develop a six foot seven uh, tackle. I just can't. I just I can't do it. Ernest Jones, 88 overall. He's 28 now. I really feel like, don't get me wrong, some of these players did start off young, but I feel like we went through a billion different seasons, yet the players never got old. Am I crazy to think that? Baxter, of course, is still young for a good reason, because he is. Uh, block shed and zone coverage, really good in fairness. Uh, then we move over to Mr. Curl, who, I mean, i got to be honest with you, we had a glow up. His speed never went up, which is really disappointing, but... You know, starting off at 73 uh, zone at, what was it, 25 maybe? Whatever age he was. I'm surprised he ever got to even close to 83 zone and 90-something overall. It's insane. Galvin, um, yeah, great corner, but he's a safety. Uh, what can I say? Great uh, man coverage, okay zone coverage, insanely fast. Then we move on to the rest of the players. Trey White, I don't know how he's still good. He's 33 now, and he's still just, like, insane. I don't know if he actually hit the regression, but... Ridiculously good. Um, no speed boost, but 90 speed is still great. Uh, well, maybe not great, but it's good. Nate Wiggins, I'm not even sure why I'm looking at him because we just signed him in free agency. This was like a preemptive move where I was just going to you know, bring him in because we we're going to let Trey White go, and obviously that worked out. Of course, Samuel's 22. I just talked about it. I think he will be 23 in fairness, but either way, 22, 23, doesn't matter. The guy feels like he's been on our team for months. Kobe Turner, the 87 overall, never devved up despite the fact that he had a really good season this latest year for us. Uh, let's actually take a look at those seasons. What, he had a really good one, right? 13 and a half isn't good enough for a dev up, though? What are we doing out here? Defensively, Mr. Newton, 89 overall. He's a great pass rusher. E98 finesse, even 83 power move to go with it. Only 73 block shed, but he is really good. I can never develop him, though. I can never get into superstar. It just doesn't happen. Villa Lobos, I don't feel the value was there for the resign, so I just didn't go for him. What was the sack total? Obviously, he's more of a block shedder anyways. He just doesn't really get on the field that much anyways. Year one was amazing, and then the rest was just mid as hell. Like I said, the best edge duo we've ever drafted and developed, if you want to even call it that, because we had some pretty good devs in here. Smallwood with a 98 power move. Great pursuit, decent block shed, insanely athletic, and he's under 25 years old, which is just crazy to think about. And then Henry, where he is a 90 overall, about to go up an overall just like uh, Smallwood, very similar in speed and Excel, very similar in size, and I mean, what a duo, really, just what a duo, and then I don't think there was anything else to look at, right, we don't really need to look at special teamers, so that's basically it, if you guys enjoy this one, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new, if you're not new, I do appreciate your continued support on the channel, uh, this was supposed to come out on Thursday, but I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna push this back to, uh, a Friday, 
And uh, tomorrow will be multiple videos, at least two, potentially three, and then we'll have another rebuild on Sunday. So a lot to see. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to start a new series on the second channel just yet. I know Last of Us 1, and I was going to do a poll between Last of Us 1 or 2. I think if I'm going to play it, which a lot of people have seen, I mean, a lot of Last of Us, let's be honest. I'm probably just going to skip right to 2. I think the story of Last of Us 1, especially with the HBO show, <laughs> I think everyone knows the story by now. And if not, they'll see it on the intro. I genuinely know, like, 5% of Last of Us 2, and I know, like, the ins and outs of Last of Us 1. So, even though I've never played the game, probably not worth playing the first one. Second one, though, I'm definitely down. Maybe you guys have a change of heart we want to see something else. Let me know in the comment section below. And like I said, let me know what team you want to see rebuilt next. I think it could be the Texans. Could be the... V Did we do the Vikings? I don't remember, but... Let me know the next team you want to see, and maybe that'll be the team. Maybe Sunday will be a challenge rebuild, though. We'll see... Anyways, like I said, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. If you're new, if you're not new, I do appreciate your support on the channel. Follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. Second channel, Picare Plays for non-meta content, which is where, you know, we talked about Last of Us. That was where it would be. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys uh, have a good weekend and uh, continue watching the channel, I suppose. There's more videos coming, like I said. Uh, but until next video, see ya!